A look into the past shows human life has changed drastically within just a few generations. In an extremely short period of time, we have introduced completely new technologies that not only allow us to make our everyday life on Earth more efficient and advanced than ever before, but also to take a closer look at the universe than ever before. Since man tends to overestimate himself, he likes to call himself the crown of creation in view of his countless achievements. But how applicable is this modest designation given the galactic total context? How far could intelligent extraterrestrial species have developed in the meantime? And what does science have to say about this exciting train of thought? Together with you, we are looking for answers today. Want to join us on our journey to the greatest mysteries of the universe? Then remember to subscribe to Cosmos Prodigy and click on the bell to stay up to date from now on. We have sent astronauts to the moon, deciphered the genetic hereditary code, and invented the internet. It seems as if humanity has achieved more milestones in the past decades alone than the inhabitants of the past would ever have dared to dream. But what if all these achievements are in fact nothing more than the tiny tip of the progress iceberg? To understand what this idea is all about, we should take a look at the so-called Kardashev scale. This is a categorization of the development stage of civilizations in terms of their energy consumption. This scale, which was worked out in 1964 by the Russian astronomer Nikolai Kartshoff, refers not only to terrestrial, but also to possible extraterrestrial cultures divided into three categories. Mankind is currently not even on the first proposed level. This states that a civilization is capable of using all the power available on a planet. The following type refers to civilizations that can use the total power of their ancestral parent's star. The third and last category again includes species that are even capable of harnessing the power of an entire galaxy. In the context of the Kardashev scale, humanity corresponds to type 0.72 in terms of energy consumption, according to some experts. If energy consumption were to increase by 3% per year, it would take at least 100 years before we reach type 1. If we were to achieve this status one day, we would be able to convert all incident sunlight, tides, wind, and all other weather phenomena and natural processes on Earth into usable energy. What seems to be already extremely advanced is in reality nothing. If we compare it with the possibilities a civilization of type 2 has, these civilizations would be able to fuse the full energy emission of their host star and not merely the radiation that hits their planet. Dyson Sphere One theoretical way in which such an ambitious endeavor could be put into practice is through the so-called Dyson Sphere. Of the different types of Dyson spheres that have been discussed over time, the variant called the Swarm seems the most realistic from today's perspective. This would involve a gigantic number of independent solar collectors orbiting the respective parent star. The devices which convert the radiation of the star into heat energy could differ, thereby regarding their sizes and forms, clearly from each other and possibly form their own sub-habitats. The mental game concerning such a Dyson sphere holds perhaps yet another completely different possibility. If an extraterrestrial species has developed such a construct already, it could reveal to us its existence. According to the eponymous physicist Freeman Dyson, this has the following background. The energy of a mother star must be given off after its complete use by a species in accordance with the law of conservation of energy. The spectrum of the emitted radiation could be shifted to long-wave infrared radiation. But has there ever been a discovery in the ranks of experts that suggested the existence of a real Dyson sphere? The exciting answer is possibly yes. A strange observation. Because in fact, a few years ago, researchers stumbled upon a most unusual detail, which led some experts to suspect that something like an artificially created Dyson sphere could actually exist in the gigantic expanses of space. While studying a star 1,450 light years away from us, the scientists registered several irregular dips in brightness as part of their work during these mysterious processes. The celestial body sometimes lost 20% of its original luminosity immediately. Different explanations arose for the true background of the unexpected observations. And indeed, one of these theories was based on the idea that the star could be surrounded by a Dyson swarm, which taps the luminosity of the celestial body and converts it into usable energy. However, the data won in the course of new investigations stand against it. According to the new information, it was most likely not a futuristic collector construct that caused the brightness dips, but extremely fine dust accumulations. The particles swallowed the radiated starlight in different spectral ranges differently. The common research opinion says that this would not be the case with an artificially created structure. However, critics argue that extraterrestrial civilizations could use technical means that are currently completely unknown to mankind. Type 3 Civilizations Let us now return to the Kardashev scale. 
Basically, the hypothetical Type 3 civilizations are believed to harness the energy of entire galaxies, with technologies that can be compared to the basic characteristics of the Dyson Sphere. The huge difference in this case, however, is the fact that we are talking about unimaginably large scales. Thus, at least in theory, entire galaxies could be graced by Dyson spheres orbiting billions of stars, and also black holes to supply their extraterrestrial inhabitants with artificially sourced energy supplies. The extraterrestrial civilizations would thus be able to draw from virtually infinite energy reserves. The only thing that could threaten the existence of this species would be an unexpected catastrophe of natural origin. But assuming that there are actually civilizations out there that have managed to harness the energy resources of a star, or an entire galaxy, wouldn't it be easy for earthly researchers to track down these advanced civilizations? The Fermi Paradox At the beginning of the 1950s, the Italian physicist Enrico Fermi also dealt with the question of why mankind had not succeeded in providing evidence of extraterrestrial life forms. Based on the assumption that highly developed, extraterrestrial life actually exists that's capable of sustaining itself over millions of years, it should be possible to colonize the entire galaxy via interstellar space travel even more according to the probability this should have already happened long ago. The fact that the trace search for extraterrestrial life led in reality, however, into nothing appeared to Fermi extremely paradoxical. This train of thought led the Italian finally to a conclusion which can be summarized and simplified as follows. If there are extraterrestrials, why aren't they here? An essential characteristic consists in the assumption that only one extraterrestrial civilization could be necessary to end the paradox. To decipher this paradox, different hypotheses have been produced over the years. The so-called rare earth theory puts a stop to the Fermi paradox from the beginning. This thesis is based on the assumption that we are indeed alone in the universe. The fact that life has blossomed on our blue home planet is simply due to some extremely improbable coincidences. It's obvious why nobody has visited us yet. Our cosmic neighbors simply lack the technical know-how. But it's possible that the paradox fails at another point according to the opinion of some researchers. It is in principle, not at all possible to colonize the entire Milky Way. This is justified not least with the immense distances in our galaxy. Could the extraterrestrial species really raise the resources to settle strange star systems? Would this even be a worthwhile goal? And if so, how could they ensure communication between different star systems? To maintain the internal cohesion of their civilization in this regard, researchers such as Jeffrey Alandes concluded that the maximum capability of any civilization would be to colonize its immediate neighboring systems within a staked-out perimeter against this background. The colonization of the Milky Way would not be uniform and all-encompassing, but rather bubble-shaped and stagnant. Now, we want your opinion. What do you think about the Kardashev scale? And what goes through your mind hearing of the exciting Fermi paradox? Just write us your thoughts, your suggestions, and your feedback to the video in the comments below. Thanks for your interest. Take care. And we'll see you next time.